day. We're back with live 4 o'clock rock think tank. Our flagship show on energy, supported by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Hello, Energy Policy Forum. <laughs> That's Sharon Moriwaki. <laughs> okay, and today, Hawaii, the state of clean energy, we have a really special show. And Ray Starling is here to help, as well as Sharon Moriwaki. Ray, say hello. Hello, Jay. Nicely and done. Hello, fans out there. This is going to be a great show, and we got a, a great start here with Ramsey Brown. Okay, we're going to talk to Ramsey Brown Energy. shortly. Uh, Hawaii Energy shortly thereafter, and talk to uh, Luis uh, Salaveria of DBED. So, Ramsey, you're first. What happened? You had this hearing about the code, about the building energy code. What happened? That's exactly right. We had exciting time last week. Uh, Jeff Michelino of Blue Planet and myself got to go down to uh, Department of Accounting and General Services and prevent, present testimony in support of the new energy code that um, they're trying to adopt the 2015 IECC, um, go and uh, support our fellow colleagues over there at the State Energy Office in, in advancing our state's energy code. Um, the electric code was also up for adoption as well, so we kind of, they combined these two to be heard, and um, both, both were codes were well heard and well supported. Okay, what was your testimony? What did you say to them? Uh, it's okay, you know, you're not under oath <laughs> anymore. <laughs> well, we showed the importance of reaching the 100% clean energy goal, our state's goal by 2045, um, and that energy efficiency is a key component of that, and keeping up with current energy code will help to support that, kind of give us a baseline from the Hawaii energy perspective, where upon which we can build with new technologies and even more advanced techniques than what's already out there. So code will set that baseline, and we can go and find even higher hanging fruit, as it were, in the energy efficiency world um, to, meet, to meet our 100% clean energy goal. And so was this yeah. a unanimous vote? It wasn't a vote yet. It was just oh. a public hearing. Okay. Um, so there are a few next steps, and ultimately what happens now? we'll put it before the governor uh, after um, some more review mm -hmm. uh, internally, and then um, we'll share it and see what the state needs okay, to okay. would like All to right. do about it. Outstanding. Um, we have a video for you. Yeah, let's look at it. Yeah. Hawaii Energy is here in support of adopting the IECC 2015 as amended. Hawaii Energy works with Hawaii's families and businesses to help them conserve energy and make smarter energy decisions. Um, the adopted energy code provides a baseline or foundation upon which we can strive for higher energy efficiency measures through our incentives and uh, through educational programs. Raising the bar on the energy code uh, allows us to explore even further techniques and technologies, um, which is something that we would like to do continuously and um, like the Hawaii energy program itself the energy code is a critical component of the state's energy efficiency portfolio standard goals. I strongly support the amendments proposed for the energy conservation code. Um, as Ramsey and I think most of us we understand that efficiency is really the core of our uh, transition to a 100 percent uh, clean energy future here in Hawaii. Uh, what the proposed amendments do is get our building code up to uh, up to speed basically it's been about a decade since it was last amended. And in that time, uh, technology has rapidly advanced. Um, and the progress made hasn't, we haven't quite caught up with our, with our building code. Um, these uh, updates and amendments are also consistent with state policy, uh, going all the way up to our constitution. It's embedded in our constitution uh, that we shall um, conserve and protect wise natural beauty and, and all natural resources, uh, including energy resources and promote the development and utilization of these resources in a manner consistent with their conservation. Okay, Ramsey, that was good. So I have a question for you before we break on this, and that is how is this going to change my life, the adoption of this uh, clean energy code? Huh? Well, hopefully if you build a new house, once yeah. the code is adopted, yeah. you'll be more comfortable. Yeah, okay. And that's ultimately, we want to meet comfort and save money on your electric Very bill. important. Ray, what have you got? You got a question, a cross-examination? Well, well I uh, just, I know that this code is very important because this one has, uh, has taken into account the, uh, the Pacific Island aspects mm -hmm. of uh, what we need with the codes. And normally we just adopted something from the mainland that didn't always apply here. So this is, this is a really big jump and I'm glad to see that we're making progress. But we're still way behind. We're, we're under the 2000. We're under the 2006 code. currently. So oh. it's good to see that again, Howard Wig of the State Energy Office has been pushing forward, um, advancing he, advancing this code and the tropical code, which is what you're speaking right, toward right, yeah. um, here in Hawaii. If it happens, I mean, I'm sure it will be, you know, approved. But when does it go into effect? 
Um, it would go into effect for the state as soon as it's approved. So we're talking possibly in 2017, and the counties have uh, two years to adopt uh, and, and bring it into the county level. Okay, I'm sure, I'm sure that Howard will do what he can to get at least Oahu to adopt it right away. We'll be pushing for it too. <laughs> Thank you, Ramsey. Thank Ramsey you, Jay. Brown, Hawaii Energy. All right. Okay, we'll take a short break. Watch this. Whoop. <laughs> wait, wait. Whoop. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am your host for Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean and renewable energy future. I'm so excited to be here with you to talk about some of the most important energy issues of our day. And most importantly, who can we bring together? Energy engineers, artists, musicians, accountants, advocates, young people, who can we bring together to talk about how we can make this path together by walking and reach 100% renewable energy? Please join me Tuesdays at 1 p.m. for Power Up Hawaii. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Aloha. I am Reg Baker, and I am the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 in the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. We highlight successful stories about businesses and individuals and learn their secrets to success. I hope you can join us on our next show on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Until then, aloha. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of uh, Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people are collaborating and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, offering lifelong learning from passionate hosts and fascinating guests ready to explore and explain Hawaii's place in the 21st century. Great content for Hawaii. <laughs> Think Tech. Okay, we're live, we're back. We're here with Louis Salavaria and also Sharon Moriwaki and Ray Starling. Wow, this is going to be an intense discussion, right? I say yes, Louis. Sure, sure, why not? Now, Louis, if you didn't know, it is the, is the chief guy. He's the director of business and economic development and tourism in the state of Hawaii, right here in our studio. Thanks for coming down. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> we'll talk about what DBED is doing about energy, okay? What it has done this year, be interested in that, what it plans for next year, um, and how are you going to do all the things we want to need to do? Well, this, is, this is a multiple part question, but go <laughs> ahead. Sure. Uh, great question. And, you know, this has been a very, uh, very busy year. 2016 was a very busy year. But one of the things that we are very proud of, uh, let's start off with the repurposing of the state's energy conference, uh, now uh, branded as The Verge. We went from having about 350 people, uh, you know, 400 people uh, previously. It started off really big, kind of tapered off a little bit. After we rebranded it in 2016, I think we had almost 800 people show wow. up to Verge this year. Major, more than double. So we were very, very happy with, with what happened. There was a big international focus on all of the things that we did, and it created momentum around it. And it, 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 it gave it new life. And so we were very excited what we did uh, with Verge this year. And another thing, which was a very great thing that happened this year, is we really reinvigorated the relationship that we have with the Department of Defense by signing the new memorandum. Of I was of there. That was at Verge, yeah, wasn't it? That was at Verge, too, yeah, as yeah. well. But what that happened, with that happening, uh, you know, we were really able to reaffirm, one, they are one of the largest consumers of energy within the state of Hawaii. They have a significant amount of resources uh, at their disposal. But then looking at things like, you know, resiliency, 
and reliability, renewable energy, transportation, all of these different things. And we created three different working groups. And those working groups have been engaged now literally for the past half year and they've been meeting and coming up with individual projects around which the state and the Department of Defense can work together on. Example. An example is uh, transportation. So we're working with, uh, with, with, with the Navy and, and specifically uh, on the e in East Honolulu to take a look at opportunities in order to create a much more broader electric vehicle infrastructure within the state of Hawaii. One of the things that's always a, a big concern when it comes to transportation is this idea of range anxiety. And the way that you address range anxiety is by putting the infrastructure in place. Mm -hmm. And so if we can get more and more infrastructure in place, utilizing strategic locations around the island, specifically, you know, Pearl Harbor is one, Kaneohe is another one, Schofield is another area, getting all of these pieces to work together, then you start kind of eliminating that range anxiety issue for people. And Hawaii, again, as an island state, kind of makes sense for electric vehicles. Oh, sure, it should. Look at Ray over there. Yeah. Ray That's right. Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them. They both Poland. drive free. <laughs> Ray, you want to tell your story? Ray, why, you Ray, why do Ray I say it. Ray drives free? <laughs> well, I, I was an early adopter like Sharon, but I also he adopted so PV at the yeah. same time. And that, uh, I was just saying, I think we've, we've just about broken even and are making money now with, with nice. our PV system. And that's with free travel as well yeah. with, uh, in terms of the fuel. So it's uh, it's a good thing, and I'm I'm happy to have been part of the uh, the first uh, adopters. adopters. <laughs> Although I've learned that over the years, pigeons start to understand that uh, the solar PV panels uh, are a good place <laughs> oh, to uh, yeah. hang out. Oh really? So you got to oh, do no. some uh, okay. some work on that too. To not not you know, you got to clean, but you've got to also <laughs> wire it off so that uh, you can't oh, catch really? They you can't get under and roost. Who would have thought? So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start a new business. <laughs> <laughs> All you early adopters, I've got your pigeon situation. <laughs> Anyway, so, so okay. I want to know the other three working. Yeah, three working. Getting, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, those yeah. were the three working. Yeah. There was yeah. resiliency and reliability. Okay. Yeah. There was transportation, and uh -huh. there was actual renewable energy generation too, as well. The renewable mm -hmm. generation. Yeah, what is generation. that? Generation. Uh, take for example the the big PV farm that we just did oh, in yeah. cooperation between the uh, uh, Hiko as well as the Navy by putting the solar farm out in uh, in the west side of Honolulu, finding opportunities for the Department of Defense as a large utilizer to actually start deploying within their footprint mm. opportunities for uh, mm. renewable That's energy great. generation. Mm -hmm. What about legislation? What have you had, you know, this year, and, or maybe a year before, and what do you plan? Well, the year before was the 100% Renewable energy. Okay, that was major. That, that, that was, was major. That, that was a major. It, we, we needed a little bit of a break after that first. <laughs> actually, uh, you know, there there were a couple of things that happened uh, during the course of uh, 2016. Uh, there was a lot of bills that were introduced, uh, but in the end, I think our perspective as well as our direction is very clear. We got to keep pushing towards 100%. And the things that that happen, you know, how we incentivize the industry, how we make the determination on what 100% really means for the state of Hawaii are things that are going to get debated, you know, over, mm -hmm. uh, over the, uh, you know, uh, did you say deba years. debate or filibuster? I, I, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, do, do we filibuster? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and so I think in 2016, a couple of things did happen. Uh, you know, the governor did sign a bill uh, to begin uh, incentivizing uh, renewable fuel generation uh, in the state of Hawaii. We're working uh, with the industry right now to help kind of develop the, the competencies around doing those types of things in the state of Hawaii. Again, another area where what we can do is incentivize the industry, create certainty within the market in order for investment to happen. Sure, sure. That, that's the, that's. The, but how do you do that? Um, you know, aside from Finding a concept, mm -hmm. you know, finding a path. How do you execute the path? How do you make the incentive happen so that people do come out of the woodwork and they do invest and they do produce the fuel and they do buy the fuel? And, and, and the big component of that is creating certainty within the market, having very clear and explicit rules and administrative rules, clear interpretation of the statutes. All of these different things are going to be integral in order to make mm -hmm. sure that anybody that comes in that wants to invest, because at the end of the day, we need the private industry to come sure in we do. Mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. make the investment uh, in this particular area, but make it very clear to them that if they do come in here, that, that they have a very clear and 
concise playing field and what they're going to be doing in terms of operate, owning and operating a business. In this what, are the, what, are the big, what are the big sort of areas that you see um, pushing the envelope, so to speak, on, on getting the market you know, developed for um, clean energy? I mean, where do you see the, the big sort of potential is for you know, creating that market, but where, in what sort of areas, or, or, or has that been developed yet? Well, I think one of the areas that is really starting to come out, and, and you're seeing it in, in discussion around, uh, you know, on the media nowadays, is this idea of how storage is going to be mm, uh, an integral component of, uh, of the energy landscape going forward. And, and so that's a particular area where the industry is somewhat evolving, and it's mm. somewhat evolving based around uh, the way the regulatory environment has, uh, has really kind of made it very clear to the industry that this is, this is where we would like to see these things happen. And so, you know, that's a big area. Storage is a big area. But I can't not say enough about how we need to diversify our portfolio, how we need to create multiple different lines of renewable energy generation in order so that we are not in a situation like how we are right now, where we're, we're solely reliant on one, on one particular source of, of energy, which in this particular case is fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. Create a more diversified portfolio. I think. I, I kind of aching it to like, you know, having your own stock portfolio. You want a different types, and not everybody is going to be a home run. Not everybody is going to be a Google or a, or a Netflix or something like that. But you need different types of diversified renewable energy sources in order to make and create a very reliable and efficient energy ecosystem. Yeah, and, and to avoid dependency on any one thing. Yes. I mean, it's like Ray's thing about finding out about the pigeons, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, really, I mean, the, the, we will have renewable surprises going forward. We'll find out that this source and this source, maybe they have issues. Mm -hmm. And we won't know until, you know, a few years go by with experience. Mm -hmm. And then we find out that maybe an issue we have to solve. And so we want to have other options yes. and, and not de 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 being dependent on any one of them. So to, to, to follow through, though, on uh, Sharon's question, you know, you, you talk about an industry, mm -hmm. and, and Lord knows the, uh, the poor installers, you know, they've lost ground over all this regulation uh, and the utility versus the regulators and back and forth about solar. Mm -hmm. um, and so now the, that industry, the part of the industry, the installers, is smaller, mm -hmm. significantly smaller than it was. Um, on the other hand, you know, renewable fuels, that may get bigger depending on how the incentive works. And the same with uh, b battery storage, mm -hmm. people who sell it, install it, what have you, um, people who write the software to connect it up mm -hmm. to the renewables and to the utility and so forth. But how do you see, in your mind's eye, how do you see this industry, which is what we have, emerging industry yeah. of energy you know, in the next few years, what will it look like? Where will the strong and weak points, who will be involved? Where will the capital come from? Because mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to come locally. I'd like it to, but mm -hmm. you know, um, well, give us a picture of that. This is, a, this is the ghost of Christmas future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here's the first thing that, that comes into mind, and, and call it philosophical or whatever, but it's also a young person's game. I think you're going to see a lot more young people really engaged in this particular industry. The type of competencies are really the things that even for me, growing up, are well beyond, are, are past my generation uh, going forward. And, you know, the ideas around the software, how software is going to be mm. integrated into our energy delivery system, how the market is actually going to operate in a very efficient and productive manner. Uh, so, one, I think the industry is going to look very young mm. uh, in terms of its demographic and its makeup. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also, the capital is going to be coming from the outside. One of the things that we do realize in the state of Hawaii is that we're, we are a small market. And uh, capital, raising capital internally is uh, it's challenging. It's challenging. It, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. In fact, uh, I think that there are good opportunities that are out there. But to get to 100%, to get to 100%, we're going to have to bring in outside capital, outside investors that are going to want to partake in what Hawaii has to, has to offer. Billions. I, yes. Mm -hmm tens of billions, hundreds of billions, I really, uh, I think, as we get to 100%. Right now, I, I'm, I'm an economist by trade, right? So, uh, so, now we know. Uh, so, you know, uh, any type of prediction past five years tends to be a of little course, bit of, uh, of you know, crystal ball uh, uh, thinking. But 
what we do kind of recognize is is that once you get towards that 2045 number, uh, the makeup, the industry, uh, the types of people, where the capital is going to be coming from, it, it may look very different than what it looks like right now. In fact, in many ways, some of the things that are happening right now uh, are, are very different than what it looked like in you know in 2008. Sure, sure, yeah. Right? And, and so, and that's just within a time frame of eight years, right? Yeah. Yeah, imagine another 32. Tout ça change, tout la même. Ray, quick follow up. Yes. Uh, do you see that the state has all the tools that it needs to to move us into this? new area i mean we've, we're doing lots of things that we've never done before in the mm -hmm. energy world yeah. and i'm i'm just wondering and i know you've got an rfp out on the street now mm -hmm. to look at the various ways that we do our um our power supply mm -hmm. here but d do we have the other components that are necessary to make it work are we set up to do it mm -hmm. and that, that's kind of an open question because sure, I, sure. i'm asking myself and, and, and i'll be uh a little uh, cautious here because it is an, an existing RFP right now. There's, there's, uh, there's mm. little I can talk about because it's currently going through the procurement process. But the one thing about being innovative and being forward thinking and leaning is sometimes the answers are not readily available. So what we wanted to accomplish with the RFP was to kind of take a look at the landscape that exists out there. What types of business models are there throughout the world, really? Uh, that can that are different than what we're doing right now is it going to be exactly a a move from where we are right now to that uh, probably not is it going to be a combination of uh, of many different good things i would tend to think so and the reason why it's going to be that is because we are so far ahead than than everybody else people you know from from other countries uh, let alone other states are looking and going oh gosh hawaii i mean you guys are so far ahead and what it is that you guys are doing. Uh, I mean, we're looking to you to see, I, I hate to say that they're looking to us to see what, we, what mistakes we make by being early adopters, but to some degree they are gonna benefit by the things that we're doing here in the mm -hmm. state. So, and in a kind of a roundabout way to answering your question, Ray, I think, do we have all of the tools necessary? Uh, not yet, but I think this RFP is one way building our competencies, building our workforces, all these different things, the types of new technology that are gonna come out within the next 10 years, within the next five years for that matter. Uh, these, are, these are things that are gonna absolutely have to be integrated into our long-term planning and long-term solution. Just to follow up to that, just tell us um, in terms of your vision for the RFP and how, I mean, I think it's kind of asking the same question in a different way, mm -hmm. but what, um, if you get a contractor from our, the RFP, mm -hmm. what will that contractor help or what are you envisioning that contractor to help DBED do in terms of furthering our mm -hmm. uh, clean energy goals, you know, just big picture wise, not, you know, specifically what you're looking for, but how does that interconnection from what they bring to us and what we're going to do taking forward? Yes. Uh, the RFP uh, answers a very question, and, and this is coming from a very, uh, a, a mentor of mine, there's a term that he used to use, you don't know what you don't know, and the RFP will help us understand what it is that we don't know. And, and I also have to say that this is something that was directed by the legislature for the state of, well, for the state of Hawaii, for DBED mm -hmm. to do. So what we really uh, want to accomplish is make sure that we, is, we accomplish the intent of the legislature. And, and when to they find out what you don't know. To help us understand, mm -hmm. right? And I think they recognize that in order to understand the things, in order to be very uh, innovative and forward-looking, taking a look at the best of, of what's out there, is that you're going to need resources in order to do that. And we're very, uh, we're very lucky that we have a very efficient and highly functioning state energy office. Uh, and they're constantly being asked uh, uh, to, to look into things, to look into things, to look into more and more and more things. Uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, it, it is a resource constraint issue. And, and so this was one way that we were able to uh, be directed by the legislature and they gave us resources. Mm. and said, you know, here's something that we want you guys to look into. And, and so that's why. So uh, that's we something to look for in the coming oh, years. That we're going to have a different maybe state energy office as well in terms of the focus, or is that not going to be affected so much? I, I don't think that's what the RFP was intention was. The RFP, the intention of the RFP was to take a look at the, 
uh, at the utility landscape, actually, and, and to take a look at the utility, the utility model, and, and to find out what other models out there e exist, and, and are there are there opportunities for Hawaii to, you know, to not necessarily copy, but to find out things that are that are working in in particular areas, and, and really kind of create that more modern utility that we're looking at. One of the things that we do know, and, and I, you know, uh, this is a position that the administration has said, is that we do believe that the utility model needs to evolve going forward. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, another big thing that mm -hmm. happened in 2006, and, you know, <coughs> you know is, was, the, was the merger, was the merger mm -hmm. issue. And if there was one thing that was made clear by the merger, was that the state really wants to see this evolving uh, utility mm -hmm. model. Mm -hmm. and, and whoever owns title to the utility is irrelevant to the issue. The issue is what kind of utility will it be going forward? How will it continue to provide reliable uh, services at, a, at, a, at an economical price uh, that everybody can, you know, can mm -hmm. partake, especially as we move forward in renewables? Energy is where the rubber meets the road. I mean, it's science, it's technology. Um, it's our economy, it's our lives at home and at work, mm -hmm. um, it's really everything and it's very complex, getting more complex. You know, the old model, you know, really, you know, the, about distributing energy to, from a central point to individual users, that, that's not working, can't work in renewables. And so, you know, what, where I get concerned, I'm always concerned about the tumultuous quality of democracy, okay. especially <laughs> in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. and so and if, I, if I started listing all the agencies and all the organizations that are involved or speaking on the point of energy policy in our state, mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't have enough time all day for that show yes. just to list them. <laughs> yes. So my question to you, Lewis, and I think it's really important um, that you're here, um, is, you know, what role going forward, I mean, it's all evolving. Mm -hmm. In fact, the roles of the individual players mm -hmm. on a stage of energy, those roles are evolving. Yeah. What role do you see DBED playing and the energy office playing going forward? I mean, what level of leadership, what level of, what do you want to call it? Involvement. Uh, involvement mm -hmm. of entrepreneurial yeah. policy, you know, let's do it, boys, mm -hmm. follow me, boys. <laughs> <laughs> the moonshot. you see that the <laughs> At, at its core, at its core, the Department of Business and Economic Development uh, is responsible for ensuring the, the expansion and diversification of the state's economy. Energy is a huge component. I consider it a factor of production. Right? It, it just as important as land, labor, and capital, you need energy. Uh, so Spoken like an economist. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it, so how energy fits within the economic development for the state of Hawaii is where DBED really plays uh, a very important role. And what's very important is this issue of reliability. Uh, one of the things as we continue to move forward down 100% renewables, as we continue to adopt new technology, as we continue to be very innovative and forward thinking and somewhat risk taking, is that we need to make sure that reliable energy is being delivered to every mm. resident in the state of Hawaii. And that is by far, you know, that's core primary mission number one. We can't make any grand assumptions that that will always be the case. I mean, sometimes there are things happen, you know? Sometimes, uh, sometimes <laughs> things happen, uh, but our responsibility is to ensure the reliable delivery of energy uh, mm -hmm. to the residents in the state of Hawaii and to do it in an economical way. And we believe that the long-term future in energy is always going to point towards renewable. Anything that is resource uh, dependent, in this particular case, mm. the fossil industry, mm. anything that's resource uh, dependent, over time will cost more money as your resources start to diminish, as scarcity of resources start to happen. Any type of, of uh, production or, or, or uh, energy creation that's built around technology is always going to cost less as it moves forward. The old rule. So, the economics of which, the, the long-term economics of this uh, always point toward uh, renewables. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the position that, uh, that, that DBED has taken with regards to renewable energy. And right now, it is how do you get there in such a way that it's not overtly disruptive. And I, I think I've used it, uh, this, this analogy in the past is that you know, moving into renewable energy future is going to be very disruptive. 
what we do need is an orderly exit out of our existing present. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, this is your turn, Ray. <laughs> Ray, Ray always okay. gets to I'll summarize <laughs> and sort of make, make, sort of make a wrapper on everything we've talked about. This is no pressure, Ray. Well, <laughs> the best wrap that I can say is this is to be continued because I, there are so many other things I'd like to throw into the conversation. Mm -hmm. we, we must have you back because uh, I, I like where we're at. I like the, what, what, we, what we've been yeah. doing. But I, I have some questions about whether the tools that we have been using to plan and regulate and make things happen are going to work with all of these uh, many, many things that have to come together. Mm -hmm. Unlike in, in the past where the utility kind of did everything and got it approved by the mm -hmm. regulators. But now you've got all, everybody's a player. <laughs> everybody's a player and we don't have a mechanism to deal with that right now mm -hmm. that I can see. So let's come back and, and or maybe you have you a cup of coffee back. or a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would love that. Uh, uh, a beer summit. <laughs> 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 We're going to work together Jay's and solve buying. all of these problems. <laughs> 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 Whether it's a coffee or at this table, you'll see. <laughs> Thank you, Luis. No, thank you, Jay. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. The I'm director really of DBED, of uh, Business, Economic Development, and Tourism in the State of Hawaii, Sharon Moriwaki, a co chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and Ray Starling, uh, an educated energy citizen and, <laughs> and more. <laughs> thank you all. Aloha. Aloha.